Orbital diagrams are a visual representation of where the electrons are in an atom. We're going to include energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals in this representation. Now, if you think back to the video on Bohr's diagram, um, Bohr's diagram only will show us the energy levels, and so the orbital diagram is going to give us a little bit more information as to where those electrons are. To draw the orbital diagrams, we have to follow some rules, and there's three of them. We'll talk about each one of these rules, and then we'll try drawing some orbital diagrams. Here's our first rule, the off bob principle. And the off bob principle states that electrons will fill the lowest energy orbital first. Again, this is the lowest energy orbital, not the lowest energy level. I've listed all the sublevels for uh, the first five energy levels here. You can see here's n equals 1 and 2 and so on all the way down. Now this isn't as simple as just following along and saying well here's the first energy level, we'll fill that first then fill the second, then fill the third and so on. There's actually a little more to it. We're not going to get into exactly why this is in this video but we'll at least learn this method of figuring out which is the lowest energy orbital. And here's what we do. We write this grid here and you can see I have all the S's in a column, all the P's in a column, all the D's in the column and then we draw these arrows at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if you can imagine, this is almost like a grid here. We're drawing these arrows through at 45. And then this is actually going to tell us the order of the orbitals as we fill them. And so we start here at the first arrow, and we follow that arrow along. And the first thing we encounter there is the 1s, and that's the lowest energy orbital. Once we get to the finish here, and once we get to the end, we go back up to the next one. Follow that down. So the next lowest energy level uh, or sublevel here is the 2s. Then we move up. Then we have 2p3s. Go back up. 3p. And we think we should have the 3d next, but it's actually going to be the 4s. Then we go to the 3d, 3p, 5s, and so on. And so this is a way that we can look at and learn what that order is. So again, the off-bob principle says electrons will go into the lowest energy orbital first. Let's go to our next rule here. It's called the poly-exclusion poly principle. The poly-exclusion principle is actually pretty simple. It just says that for every orbital, there could be a maximum of two electrons. So two electrons per orbital that is the max. And you may remember, we've talked about this rule before, that they have to be having a different spin. And so we'll have one with the up spin, we use these little half arrows here, and one with a down spin. So that's the Pauli exclusion principle. And our final rule here is called Hun's rule. Another name for this is the empty bus seat rule. Okay, let me just first explain why we call it the empty bus seat rule. Now just imagine taking some kind of public transit, a bus or a train or something like that, and you get onto that vehicle and you look and see all the rows of seats and you see that all the seats are empty except for just one seat where there's somebody sitting right there. And so when you go to choose your seat, you're probably not going to sit right here next to that total stranger. I'd imagine you would choose a seat that's empty. And this is the way electrons view orbitals. If we can imagine that each one of these seats represents an orbital, if an electron sees an orbital has somebody in it already, even though orbitals can hold two electrons, if they cease an electron's there already, they're not going to go there. They're going to find another empty orbital in the same energy level. All right, so that's Hund's rule. Let's go ahead and try drawing an orbital diagram here. Let's draw the orbital diagram for calcium. And if you look at calcium here on the periodic table, we can see that its atomic number there is 20. And so it has 20 electrons in that atom. I've already set up this uh, orbital diagram here, and let me just show you the different parts here. This is just one way to draw an orbital diagram. There's other ways to do this, but I've drawn this on a scale of increasing energy. So low energy is down here, the lowest energy, and the lowest possible energy is the 1s orbital. Now just remember, 20 electrons, that's what we have to account for. So let's start filling these in one by one, starting with the lowest energy first. We use these little half arrows to represent those electrons. So we have 2 in the 1s, 2 in the 2s, and then we'll fill 2p according to Hun's rule here. So the next electron is going to occupy an empty seat or orbital, and then we'll start pairing them up. So I've accounted for 10 electrons so far. Next we'll go to the 3s, and then we can go to the 3p following Hun's rule. 
and then finally the 4s and those there's where the 20 electrons are going to go let's try another one take a look at nitrogen on the periodic table you'll see that nitrogen has seven electrons because its atomic number is seven so let's draw the orbital diagram for this one so let's set it up starting with that scale here for the energy level and the very lowest possible energy is going to be the 1s and so let's fill that up first and so we'll put two electrons into the 1s so we have two of the seven and then we'll go up to the 2s put two electrons in there and then what comes after the 2s it's going to be the 2p and that has three orbitals and we have three more electrons to put in there and so following Hund's rule those electrons are all going to go into their own orbital according to the empty bus rule. 